وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. الحمد لله في نعمة. Thank you for hosting me once again, uncle. الحمد لله في نعمة من الله إن the grace and the blessing of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. اللهم آمين بارك الله فيكم. الحمد الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وبعد. For the last few minutes and days, الحمد لله we've been meeting at around this time, speaking about trying to achieve a Hajj of a lifetime, a Hajj where we return to our families. As the Prophet ﷺ prophesied, as we were first born by our mothers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are gifted and given the blessing of a hajj that is mabroor. Allahumma ameen. Now we've spoken in detail about some of the main requirements of hajj and, and so on. And we ended the last two or three sessions speaking about women's issues. And today in this session, we're going to end that discussion with the women's issues insha'Allah and begin looking at some common mistakes that occur whether intentionally or unintentionally by those in Hajj and how to fix them. And before the end of the week, we will speak about the ziyara, <coughs> excuse me, the ziyara to the Masjid of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to his blessed city al Madhina al Munawwara. Uh, does a menstruating woman need to perform tawaf al wada'? Now this is an important question. We said yesterday that it is essential for a menstruating woman before she departs from Mecca al-Mukarramah, if she is not sure when she will return again, if it is not expedient for her to, Mecca, uh, to return to Mecca, that it would not be possible for her to remain in an extended period of uh, ihram away as a distant from her husband until she returns again, that even if she's in her state or hayd and menstrual cycle, that she should perform tawaf al-ifada or tawaf al-ziyara, which is one of the four arkan, four requirements that cannot be left off for the validity of the hajj. To stand on the mountain of Arafah, to perform tawaf al-ziyara, tawaf al-ifada, and to be in a state of ihram as is necessary and from where it's necessary. And finally, to make the sa'i between Safa and Marwa. These are the essentials of the Hajj. And we said that Tawaf al Ifada, there is no disagreement amongst the four Imams that it is an essential Rukn of the Hajj. So the Imams, some of them uh, uh, contemporary as well as the ancient past, have said that even if she's in a straight of menstrual cycle, if she is not able to stay until she uh, uh, arrives to purity, she should make Tawaf al Ifada after having a Ghusl and a Wudu and tying herself up well makes the tawaf and asks Allah for his forgiveness and Allah is ghafoor rahim. Now the question is about the second tawaf, which is tawaf al wada'ah, which is she's done tawaf al ifada, she's done the essential tawaf of hajj, and now uh, she's been in Mecca for a few days, then the menstrual has arrived, and now they're saying we're leaving Mecca al mukarrama It is the custom of Prophet ﷺ that we are to do the tawaf, uh, of wada, the farewell tawaf, to say our final greetings to the Kaaba and ask Allah to return us to it again. It is in this case that we say tawaf al wada is a non essential, it's not one of the four, and therefore to do it without tahara, to do it in a state of hayd or nifas, menstrual cycle or postpartum bleeding, would become sinful behavior. And therefore our sisters should not perform it. This is something that would be forgiven for them by Allah and it is seen that there is no penalty upon the woman for doing this because the Prophet ﷺ did not mention a penalty for it when Safiya radiallahu anha wa ardaha uh, had performed tawaf al-ifada in their hajj but had not to form tawaf al wada And the Prophet ﷺ said to Aisha, we will wait for you but not for Safiya uh, to wait for her for tawaf al wada They departed without it and she did not pay any fidya or any dam, insha'Allah. Those are really important issues, and they are issues of judgment of the ulama. We always take advice from our local scholars, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accompany us in our hajj with the righteous and the pious imams, Allahumma ameen. Uh, a final thing that is important um, for our sisters, which is with regards to the pill. 
uh, the pill that delays the menstruation and the menstrual bleeding. Uh, now, Al-Lajna uh, al-Da'ima, the standing committee uh, in Saudi Arabia and the imams of different um, institutes say that it is permissible, it is is permissible for a woman to use pills to delay her menstrual cycle at the time of Hajj if she fears that she might get her period through her calculation of it at a time where it is needed for her to be clean. This can likewise be done in Ramadan for the fasting days as well. This is the fatawa of the imams of some of the large uh, fatwa bodies around the world. Now I do add to this from my personal experience leading groups for many years that there are many sisters who delay taking the pill before Hajj by say maybe two weeks or one month. You are putting yourself in a great risk of developing spotting and irregular bleeding which will give you a lack of contentment, a lack of peace of mind throughout the Hajj. If you have not adjusted your cycle with these pills at least three months in advance, if you're only doing it a week or two out before you travel, I say to you sister, it is better to use our fiqh and the expertise of the local ulama to identify ways and solutions to alleviate that problem insha'Allah, rather than to worry about it throughout your time. So as an advice to our sisters, take the pill three months out, get your body accustomed to it, because when you travel to Mecca al-Mukarramah and to al-Hijaz, your body under the stress of tawaf, the stress of the heat, the change of climate, the change of food, the change of attire and bed, your menstrual cycle in and of itself will not become regular and is going to fluctuate and therefore don't add any more complexity to it insha'Allah. Now let's look at some common mistakes. We can consider that one of the common mistakes. A lot of sisters make that as a common mistake. They delay taking that pill, they go to the doctor one week before they head to Hajj and then they don't have a good Hajj because of it. One of the mistakes, another one of the common mistakes is related to Al-Ihram, to the garments that the men wear in particular on the women wear and the niyyah of ihram that is performed. One of the most common mistakes is that people forget to make the niyyah or they make the niyyah incorrectly. And all of a sudden as they are coming to the place of miqat, instead of saying labbayk Allahumma bil umrah or labbayk Allahumma bil hajj or labbayk Allahu umratan uh, wa hajj, uh, they make, um, they convolute it, they mix it all up, they add them all together and it results in them making a false intention, al-talbiyah. I do remind you that it is important that we follow the nas, the wording of the Prophet ﷺ, and we say, labbayka uh, Allahumma bil umrah, if we are doing tamattu' before we go to hajj, and not mention hajj, or else you are now necessary to remain in a state of ihram until the hajj, insha'Allah. It might, if, if somebody passes the station, just say you fell asleep on the plane, you fell asleep on the bus. Subhanallah, you took one of those anti-nausea pills and you were drowsy. You did not wake up in time before you were flying over the miqat to say the talbiya. What is it that you should do? You have one of two instances. Either you go back to the miqat, to the station where you should not have crossed and make your talbiya again and start fresh. Or two, you must offer a sacrifice, a dam. Uh, a blood sacrifice of a sheep in Mecca al-Mukarramah and feed all of its meat to the poor. You cannot ingest any of it, you cannot share it with your friends. It must be all to the poor. And this is whether you're in the air or in the sea or by land, in any case, in any shape, way or form, if you pass the miqat. One of the other errors is the error of tawaf. And one of the things that you will see a lot of people do, they are subhanAllah excited and in love of the house of Allah. And this is a sign of Iman. وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ That when they uh, uh, have a fondness of that which Allah has made an honorable thing, it is because of the piety of their heart. One of the common errors is that people start tawaf from the moment they enter the haram. And therefore they might be on the back side of the Kaaba, not facing the black stone, but they, it's as if they have already intended their tawaf and they have begun their tawaf from there, not entirely beginning, which is an obligatory act from where the black stone is. So delay yourself until you get to the black stone, even if you are on the other side, even if you miss the black stone, go all the way around, don't count it as one and begin it there. Second mistake that you see is that people do tawaf through the Hijr of Ismail 
or they come through a portions of the Kaaba which should be left out of tawaf because it will make your tawaf invalid. So don't go through the Hijr of Ismail or as you're making tawaf you see they open the door for the Hijr of Ismail and you go inside and you uh, you know you do your salah and then you go back around the other way and, and, and you continue with the tawaf as if it is one. No, that don't count that as a circuit. Number two, uh, number three, another mistake that you see is that people do the raml, the quick step of running during all seven circuits. It's only during the first three circuits around the Kaaba. It is only during the first three and it is for tawaf al qudum, for the tawaf of arrival that it is to be done. Number four, it is fighting and struggling and battling with other believers to come near to the black stone, which means that you are hitting or pushing or shoving or pulling apart other believers. Such an act which are injurious to the Muslims and to yourself are not permissible and reprehensible. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open hearts to this reality. Allahumma ameen. Another one is that when people come to make their tawaf at the black stone, they chant out things that are not legislated by the Prophet ﷺ. All of a sudden you'll see people say, Bismillah, Wallahu Akbar, was salatu was salamu ala Rasulillah. And they make this long invocation at the black stone rather than Allahu Akbar, as was taught by the Prophet Muhammad Another mistake that is done in tawaf, common mistake, is that people touch all four corners of the Kaaba or touch the Hijr, the semicircle of Ismail, during their tawaf. And we know that the Prophet ﷺ did not touch any part of the Kaaba except the black stone and the Yemeni corner as a part of his tawaf in terms of ibadah. So when you're in your tawaf, don't touch and hold on to the walls of the Kaaba when you're in tawaf. That's something at a different time. In tawaf, if you're going to make tawaf, it is an act of worship that should model the behavior of the Prophet ﷺ. He only approached the black stone and the Yemeni corner. So stay away from the other places. One of the reasons for that is that the walls of the Kaaba are heavily perfumed and they add perfume to it. And when you're in ihram, you're going to be putting that perfume intentionally on yourself and could be something that is not done well. Another one of the mistakes that we commonly see, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expiate our sins and accept from us our shortcomings uh, as being acts of sinfulness and forgetfulness that He forgives for us, is making specific formulations and supplications that are men not mentioned by the Prophet ﷺ, but making them specific for places that he did not make specific So the only things that we know that were made specific by the Prophet ﷺ in tawaf was between the Yemeni corner and the black stone he would say رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارُ He would say that between the Yemeni corner and the black stone. At the black stone he would say Allahu Akbar, right? So these are the ma'thur, narrations from the Prophet Do not, you are welcome to make other invocations, other dua, other praise of Allah, but don't make it obligatory that every time I come to this area, I have to say this dua. I have to make durood in this place because this wasn't legislated by the Prophet Muhammad Another, number seven, is raising your voice so loud that it disturbs others in tawaf. And this is something common where you have that, you know, loud voice, Rabbana, and other people, Rabbana, and it's as if they have no care for the worship of others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَغْضُدْ min sawtik, Lower your voice, especially when it comes to the act of ibadah. Al-jahr is not something that is desirable except in necessity. So it is something we should lower our voices, insha'Allah. There shouldn't be microphones that are elevated that makes a, a rambling noise for other people trying to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number eight, and we end with this insha'Allah, that people begin to struggle and fight and compete with one another at the maqam of Ibrahim. The gold, the, the copper encased footprint of Ibrahim, it's almost as if they treat it like the black stone. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. And there is nothing in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ that has made any recommendation for this. Insha'Allah, tomorrow we will continue with a few more errors that are related to the sa'i, that are. <laughs>
related to the hair cutting, related to the day of Arafah and others insha'Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may uh, assist us in doing that which is closest to the sunnah of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu for he said to us khudhu anni manasikakum sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says in the authentic hadith take and acquire your rights of pilgrimage from my behavior and attitude and habit sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may Allah allow us to stop where he stopped and begin where he began sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa jazakumullah khair once again to our ITV network uh, brothers and sisters in South Africa for hosting me for another discussion wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.